The views and opinions presented on this program do not necessarily coincide with those of our ownership, management, or staff. Welcome to Tech Talk 2020 with Sanjay Parker, the show where we get smarter together. I'm your humble tech host, Sanjay Parker. I'm here with Mike Carswell, my co-host, to talk about all things technology related for your home, your business, and your life. We've got an exciting show for you today, and it's all about the Internet of Things. i got to tell you this, though. We really appreciate you joining us tonight. Again, I'm Mike Carswell here with Sanjay. We are going to talk about some cool things tonight, and I want to encourage you all to be a part of this show. You can join us at Tech Talk 2020 uh, on Twitter. Or you can Facebook us at uh, Tech Talk 2020. Just go to our Facebook page at Tech Talk 2020. I'm expecting some noise tonight. I got a couple of my young Carswells are listening tonight, so we're excited about that. That's awesome. We love all of our listeners, and the Carswells are a great constituency. (laughs) Hey, the Parkers are nice, too. That's right. Parkers were listening and tuning in last week before bedtime, so it's (laughs) awesome. Tonight might be too late for them. Uh, So, Mike. Picture this, okay? Again, the theater of the mind. I promise not to embarrass you as much. Tonight. you got to do the Rod Sterling for me, though. Imagine if you will. <laughs> Imagine if you will. Okay, there you go. One morning, mm-hmm. your wearable bracelet wakes you up gently by vibrating and then turning on your radio, slightly opening your blinds, and turning the lights on at a dim level so you can adjust to the wake up. Mm-hmm. Now, it wakes you up on a preset interval of about a 15 minute span because it doesn't want to wake you up during REM sleep, right? Rapid so eye movement. You got it, which is <laughs> not good to be interrupted from. So it wakes you up. Then it notifies your coffee maker to start making your morning joe. Mm-hmm. It tells your car to start warming up in about 15 minutes to be ready for you before you go. That is if I park outside. Yes, or even in your garage, <laughs> oh, okay. unless your garage is heated. My garage is pretty cold, but I know Ours that is heated. Ours is heated. people of your stature have much, <laughs> much more uh, amenities at this point. I'm feeling it. Uh, <laughs> then you walk to your bathroom, okay? Yes, sir. And while you brush your teeth, your dentist gets a report of your oral health and your brushing habits. Oh, wow. And then you Ooh. use the bathroom. It was going well till you said that. What? And then you use the bathroom, <laughs> and your toilet is looking for a precancer gene and also analyzing your diet. Hello. Your refrigerator will then also know when you are low on milk, and it'll Mm -hmm. track and even order food for you based on your family's consumption habits. No more shopping lists and no more forgetting something at the store. And based on last week's show, a drone's going to come and bring my gallon of milk that I need, right? It's all part of the ecosystem. (laughs) All of this data pulls together to provide what we call a hyper-personalized and hyper-connected set of instruments and activities that will make you live better, longer, and happier. This is one of the many promises of the Internet of Things. Is this the kind of world that you want to be part of? I'm a little shaky. i got to admit to it because uh, you think about uh, how you stay healthy, I think, is, is movement and getting up and getting around. So, you know, the stumble to the shower for me is, is kind of a, a, a nice moment. I think I'm waking up. I sing in the shower, too. Will the Internet of Things inter- interrupt any of that going on? <laughs> If it's detrimental to your family's health, it may. But oh, yeah, I've heard might. you saying you're pretty good. So <laughs> it it should might be okay. mute me. <laughs> well, Shut up. You know, tracking your calories and your activities, that's sure. already something people do today, right, mm-hmm. with those wearable bracelets. A little warning, a little competition, perhaps you haven't gotten enough steps. It's infallible in terms of being able to notify you based on the data it gets if it's good data. Humans are fallible, right? I know that I might not want to work out today. My wife might tell me, hey, didn't you say at the beginning of the year you're going to exercise every day? That's great, but she won't do it every single day at 7 p.m. when it's time for me to work out to remind me. And, in fact, I don't want her doing that, right? (laughs) So these devices are are just designed for you. It's hyper-personalized to your habits, and it'll know. Look, if you ran up and down stairs all day for work, you may need to exercise less to meet your your calorie uh, expenditure. Okay, okay. So uh, I'm looking at my entire health profile when when uh, when I'm, I'm I'm hearing what you say. So the uh, the basically my intelligent home is going to help me maintain my uh, my uh, uh, desire to fulfill that that health level that I'm pursuing. Right? It's, yeah. It's going to talk to me about my teeth. Talk to me about my. Um, 
waste, I guess you just mentioned. And, it and, could. And it, it could, could communicate right. all these things to me in, in my refrigerator, in my coffee. Uh, it, it can do all those things for me is what right. I'm saying. It may okay. talk to you. It may talk to somebody you designate as having to deal with that data. Maybe your dentist then meets with you and says, hey, Mike, you know. We noticed that, you know, on Sunday mornings, this is really when you consume the most sugary, you know, things based on your toothbrush. Mm -hmm. Uh, Maybe you need to look into that. But let's step back for our our listeners and say, let's define IoT. So the Internet of Things, the Internet of Everything, the Internet of Everyday Things, those are all synonyms. And it's really about everyday objects, machines, computers, sensors, relays, all having the ability to have connectivity to the internet and being able to send and receive data. Simply put, this Internet of Things ecosystem is about the collection, transmission, and actioning around data. It's all about that. So sensors collect the data. Mm -hmm. Um, The internet transmits it over to a data source or an analysis tool. And then some action is taken, depending on that, and depending on the algorithms and programming around it. This is a big deal. So they're saying by the year 2020, 50 billion, with a B, devices will be connected to the Internet. Today, there's about 7 or 8 billion devices connected to the Internet. That's more items connected to the Internet than there are humans. Okay. Right? And so they're saying by the year 2020, there will be about 7 connected devices per person. Last year, it was already at 3.5 connected devices per person on the planet. There's going to be 8 billion, with a B, mobile broadband access points by 2019, and 4.5 million jobs related to the Internet of Things by 2020. Here's my my head thinking about this fact that uh, uh, you're telling me about the Internet of Things and connection. So is is the platform for everything Wi-Fi? Is that where it all begins? That really helps because now you don't have to run wires everywhere. Absolutely. It could be Wi-Fi. It could be... um, you know, 3G, 4G from your phone. Okay. Any way to okay. Con- contribute data to the grid, right? Gotcha. So these devices collect that useful data, and useful is defined by, you know, what we decide as consumers, as marketers, as developers of these products. And then um, it autonomously flows data between it and other things. So. Go ahead. I was just going to ask you a question connected to the. Uh, so you started my day with uh, with the blinds opening, and you know I think in some probably some Bond movies there have been a feel of those kind of things occurring in the future. Yep. So of course not everyone out there looks X and will be able to afford the things that James Bo- James Bond does, and and so uh, obviously in many situations we take baby steps. Mm-hmm. So let's start with the baby steps. Right now I count my. My daily steps up to ten thousand a day. <laughs> Dude, good. <laughs> Not good. up to, but but you know that that's the goal each day, of ten thousand steps per day uh, on my phone. And I know people do things with Fitbit that are probably a little bit more advanced than that. Um, so that connects in with your healthy lifestyle. So point me to we take we oh I got this. Here's a good one for you, and I think everybody can relate to this. How many of you guys have friends out there that have this obsession with taking pictures of their food? Mm-hmm. I know. I don't. Know, I don't know what the term is, but food selfies or food porn. <laughs> yes, that's a one terminology attached to it. But I always think about the fact: how many calories are they consuming when they take? Will, will we reach a point where we could take a picture of some food and know, hey, that's nine hundred and seventy-two calories? Probably. Yeah. You that's can. Al- there's already tools where you can scan, you know, the barcode um, of of a product and find out all the details about it and the ratings. You know, in terms of what's good, what's bad, it'll interpret that food label for you based on social data. So people are saying yeah this is horrible it has you know uh, this type of food dye in it you know even though it's listed somewhere buried in those ingredients it gives you a quick snapshot this is going to make your kid hyper don't get it <laughs> i'm gonna i'm gonna guess people would like to do that but there's probably most of us and we don't we don't utilize that tool yet you guys i'm saying you guys from a technology yeah. standpoint we got to make that popular somehow right yeah it's gonna get there i mean okay. people are expecting this so think about the current consumer examples in these baby steps mm-hmm The Nest thermostat was probably one of the most widely known elements of IoT devices that is out there today. Nest? You're calling it Nest. Nest, N-E-S-T. N-E-S-T. And Google bought this company, and they created a thermostat that said, we know that most people who buy these programmable thermostats could save a lot of money if they use them. They don't program them. People get these programmable thermostats and just turn the heat up or down when they feel warm or cold. Okay. And so what Nest said is, we're going to connect to the Internet. We're going to let you program it, but we're also going to default set up some profiles based on your occupancy of the house. Mm -hmm. You tell us a range of comfort, or we're going to track when you change 
the temperature up and down. Okay. We're going to tune that so that, hey, if you wake up at 7 o'clock in the morning, we're going to make sure the house is warm enough for you. If you leave the house and there's no activity, we're going to turn down the heat. If you are away from work and your phone says you're away at work and we know you're going to work, we're going to cut the flow down. If you get within five miles of your house, we're going to turn up the heat in advance, knowing you like it at this temperature at the time you get home. So all of those things are happening today. So that Nest thermostat, pretty amazing. It was a breakthrough technology, auto-programmed itself, reacted to the lifestyle of the household, and then connects with other devices to make your life a bit easier. So is that happening only in a newer home, or it no, doesn't matter? You can retrofit it. It's 199 bucks for the previous generation, 249 bucks, I believe, on Amazon for the, the version 3. I got a garage door opener yes. a couple weeks ago from Amazon. Very inexpensive. It came with a, a Wi-Fi gateway. And now, in fact, this is actually great stuff. I got a text from my babysitter who has my children at church. Okay. It's, um, it's our pastor's daughter, and she just texted me and said, we are leaving the church now and heading to the house. I'm going to go into my app here, and I'm going to see that the garage door has been closed for one hour. That's when I left. Okay. I'm going to click it, and now it's opening the garage door. And okay. I'll get a notification that it opened. When she gets home with the kids and shuts it, I'll get another notification that device can be programmed to my car so that when I pull into the driveway, it automatically opens itself up. Because, so we're going to go back to, uh, uh, what's that word, Adver trivia? <laughs> Two minutes. Administrivia. <laughs> Administrivia. I'm sorry. Messed up that one. I'm sorry, guys. Administrivia. So all these little uh, uh, things that you have to do manually now, you're taking them away slowly but slowly, slowly but truly. Yeah, we don't want to do that. And, and the immediate value is around that automation, but it's also transparency and trust. So if you plug in a device into your home that's advertised, as energy efficient and it's not the other devices will see it and report it and rat it out and say no it's not energy efficient so it's pretty cool but let me just talk about the three big things okay, let's um, do that. before we go to break yep. around what's in it for us so mm -hmm. for your home Mike it's really around automation and getting rid of administrivia so we can focus on the important things our family our work and our, you know, if it's spirituality, if it's health, whatever it is, lets us focus on that. We're not dealing with these little inconveniences. Two, for your health. We know that we can get a better understanding of our body using these sensors. There's even a pill you can swallow. I believe it's called a, the Proteus. You swallow the pill. You wear a special waistband. It'll track itself through your body and give you a full analysis of that body. Yikes. And then for businesses, <laughs> okay. you know, you got to know this. If you okay. own a business today, mm -hmm. the expectations of having a device is that it's a smart device and that also your business knows how to use the Internet of Things uh, and their devices and their data in your ecosystem and see how that applies to your customers from everywhere, from car dealerships to people who sell smoothies and shakes to people who sell any kind of product. The expectation is you'll fit into that ecosystem. Okay. So taking that in, in, uh, in your mind, I'm going to continue to think of things to ask you questions here, uh, Mr. Parker here. because But we have to take a break. We're going to be rolling out uh, uh, and coming back here and talking a little bit more about the Internet of Things. Again, tweet us at Tech Talk 2020. Or you can hit us up on our Facebook page. If you have questions about the Internet of Things, where things are happening in your home. I mean, the coffee makers, <laughs> the, uh, uh, the I don't know, the, the sh automatic shower, the shades, all those kind of things that can happen. And it's not just a James Bond house. It can be your house for sure. Is that what you're saying? That is exactly what we're saying. Okay, we'll be uh, back with you in a few moments. I'm Mike Carswell with Sanjay Parker. You're listening to Tech Talk 2020 on Integrity Radio, WINT 1330 AM, and WINTradio.com. Pat O'Brien Chevrolet thanks those who dedicate their lives to keeping us safe, defending freedom, and the American way of life. Policemen, firemen, and the military, past and present, deserve our support and gratitude. At Pat O'Brien Chevrolet, we say God bless you and God bless America. Selecting the right mattress can be a difficult process. Although we encourage you to take your time, we realize that a short test in our showroom is a far cry from a full night of sleep in your own home. We understand the impact that this decision can have on your life, and that's why at the Original Mattress Factory, we've got you covered. This is Robin Trzinski, and while we don't take returns or exchanges to ensure that you only ever receive completely brand new products, we do have one of the best comfort exchange policies in the industry. 
This 365-day policy is there to help you out in case you don't completely love the mattress you've chosen. It gives you one full year to reselect a different mattress that will better suit your comfort needs and give you a better night's sleep. There are fees associated with this policy, and our sales associates can fully explain the details. All you need to do is ask. So stop by and experience more than just a mattress store. Experience an original. The Original Mattress Factory, 4930 State Road, right at the Florida ramp. Or visit us at OriginalMattress.com. Are you ready to party? Lost Nation Sports Park has countless special event possibilities for all ages, from 10 people to 8,000. Tired of the same old catering hall? Get creative, mix it up, do something different for your anniversary, birthday, or bridal, baby, or wedding shower. Put some fun in your fundraiser. Or take corporate team building strategic planning sessions for office parties off-site. Call Maryland, 440-604-2000. Lost Nation Sports Park, action in your action plan. It's the Wake Up Show. Join us at 6 a.m. with author and historian Richard Croker giving us a guide to the customs, culture, and language of the South. The Adventure Girl Stephanie Michael shares her top tips for getting ready for spring break, plus the News Herald's Mark Mazoros on Integrity Radio, WINT, 1330 a.m. Welcome back to Tech Talk 2020. I'm Sanjay Parker, your host, with Mike Carswell. We are talking about the Internet of Things, and thanks for joining us. Don't forget, we'd love to hear your comments or questions through Facebook, Tech Talk 2020, or Twitter, at Tech Talk 2020. So we talked about all of this great stuff we can do with the Internet of Things and IoT, but I'd like to also talk about how is this possible? How are we able to get all of these devices on the Internet? And the key concept here is that Every Internet-connected device has a unique IP address, and that's the basis of the Internet today. So if I type in www.apple.com, I'm actually going to a number, like 87.222.36.14. Not and to not, Apple. Right. Okay. Well, you are. That is Apple. Apple owns that, and they have the right to use it. But instead of me remembering that 87 dot whatever it was, <laughs> which I don't even remember after I just said it, <laughs> I can type in apple.com. These domain name servers and the DNS trees will point me to apple.com. Did you say DNS trees? Mm -hmm. Okay, so everybody out there, DNS trees. Yep, Dona domain name servers. Okay, there you got it. Domain so name servers. Okay. Every object has a unique number based on those four octets. Something okay. dot something dot something dot something. Mm -hmm. That was created and ratified about 30 years ago so, and it allowed for 4.2 billion unique numbers we're out of those numbers pretty much already really yeah we're very wow. you know so there's other kind of schemes we're doing so they ratified ip version 6 they skipped version 5 so let's do version 6 and that provides 3.4 times 10 to the 38th power so that's 340 trillion trillion <laughs> trillion Unique numbers. We are going to exhaust that at some point. Mm -hmm. In fact, the amount of data today, we're we're at like one times ten to the ninth, you know, or nineteenth, whatever it is. We're at the point where some of the world's data. We're we're doubling the amount of data in the world every like three to four months. It's crazy. Well, I never knew there were that many recipes. <laughs> it's YouTube videos and okay. Facebook posts and uh -huh. pictures. All that data. We're gonna run out of. You know, um, numbers, you know, and numbering schemes. There's no classification for how much data we have. We and have to create And you numbers. use the alphabet. We'll go from numbers to, to letters. And then we'll need something else. <laughs> I hope so, that was too simple. <laughs> so there's a, let's speak about those big numbers. There are going to be sure. trillions of devices on the Internet mm -hmm. in, in a matter of, of several years, right? We're not talking 30 years. We're talking maybe 10 years. And so let's talk about what that means with trillions. Mickey McManus, who was one of the executives over at Autodesk, a leading design firm, he wrote a book called Trillions. It's a great book, fun fun read, and, and I recommend it to anybody. He's saying there's going to be a trillion devices embedded into the Internet at some point relatively soon. Mm -hmm. So today we know we have a billion users of the Internet. We know there's more Internet-connected nodes than people. But let's look at the meaning of trillion, how big that is right now. So let's look at that in seconds, okay, Mike? Gotcha. So let's talk about going back in time. So if we went back in time one million seconds, how far do you think that would take us? G gosh, never even thought about that. Let's say 42 years. Not bad. So it would take us back one week. 
<laughs> That's thank okay. You. Hey, thank you very little. Your guess is great. I mean, that was a guess. At least you're in the realm of possibility. I, I think I guessed something totally off. So. What if we go back a billion seconds? Where would that take us back to? Oh, what that's year? another math question. Huh? Yeah, what year do you a think? Million take billion, us? A million billion? A million millions? Yeah. If we're so weak, let's let's make it a year and a half. So it'd be the mid nineteen seventies. Okay. <laughs> if you take okay. one trillion seconds, okay, this is how big this number is, and you go back a trillion seconds, how mm-hmm. many years ago is that? The mid nineteen seventies is this what forty years? Did you say that? That's for a billion. What ah. about a trillion? Oh, Where a trillion. Would that take us? Oh, my. Mid 1970s. See, I missed a, missed a T and a B. Sure, let's go back to 1863. Okay, you're getting there. So, <laughs> a trillion seconds back in time would take us back 30,000 years. That's not That's how big a trillion is. Okay. And we're talking about having trillions of devices connected to the internet. This is huge. The size of the Internet of Things market in 2009 was $182 million. Gotcha. In 2015, it was $743 million. In three years, it's going to be $1.7 billion. Okay? No, I'm sorry. $1.7 trillion. Okay. In 2019, the growth is staggering. So you're trying to tell me there, the, the, there's job opportunities beyond anybody's comprehension in the world of technology. Yeah. One of the great things that I talked about. So we talk about job loss, but mm-hmm. we're also talking about job creation. So I've had the opportunity to um, be one of the founding members of the Cisco IOT Talent Consortium. And what they're saying is, we need more talent to take advantage of this, right? Now, Cisco's really heavily involved in the Internet of Things because they power the networks behind it. And what they're saying is, look, a data analyst today uh, needs to understand huge volumes of data, and that's a job that can be trained for. A network administrator can learn how to do cloud administration. So they're saying, don't throw away people who are working on technology today. Bring them in and teach them how to deal with the volume and the scale of the Internet th- of Things. It's been great. There's lots of interest in it. Honestly, the biggest challenge is education. Yes. That's what it sounds like. You're 100% right. Speaking of education, I had a little education today. Let's hear about I it. I happened to be with a, a potential customer today who had a, give me the proper title for it, an Echo. Okay, an Amazon Echo. Echo. An uh-huh. Echo machine, and, and it's called Alexa. Mm-hmm. I've seen a few commercials for those. Right. Uh, I left after about five minutes wanting, wanting one of those. <laughs> it was pretty cool to sit there and say, Alexa. What size shoe am I wearing? No, it, it wasn't quite that specific, but it was interesting, uh, and, and I'm sure my guys out there who know me will understand why. We got the weather, we got the sports, we got whatever we needed kind of in a nice volume in the room, and then I said, Alexa, play me some Stevie Wonder, and it busted right into the song right off of Talking Book from 1972. Isn't that great? It was pretty great? stinking cool. She is your personal assistant, Aha. right? And the Internet of Things device is the Amazon Echo. It's hyper-connected to the Internet, and to your surroundings and any other devices in the ecosystem. Somebody just, speaking of Teslas, which I love talking about, Mm -hmm. somebody figured out how to get their Amazon Echo to remote start their Tesla by asking it to do so. So it's just amazing how we can connect all of these things and create that personal assistant that never gets tired, never asks for a raise, and (laughs) and never really needs any food or shelter or anything like that. Maybe a little shelter. Can't put it in the rain, but... But at this point, I, th- I still think that the, again, the, the in- Internet of Things and all the automation of our, our daily lives that's coming yep. is still connected to the guy that's technically driven. You know, and still the guy that says, I want to lean this way. So at some point, we're going to hit a, hit a point where it's not going to be that guy. It's going to be everyone will see that this is an easier way to go. Yeah, and we know that the digital natives, people who are born into this technology, are very close to outnumbering the digital immigrants. And Uh that shift and that tide will change very soon in the next 10 years, I believe. Uh, natives and immigrants. I'm I'm an immigrant. I'm I'm telling you. It's okay. You can still get your your citizenship. You will still take me. <laughs> that's awesome. So that's good. So thank. You. That's a great example. So we're being exposed to this. We'll also see that the um, continuum of product adoption will, you know, starts off with the early adopters, the bleeding edge, the people who are ready to take risks and deal with some of the drawbacks. But over time, those products get very polished Mm -hmm. and they get very easy and you just plug it in and it'll find its way it's kind of like 
uh, Jurassic Park where they found those dinosaur eggs outside of the confines of the compound and they said life will find a way. Sure. Found a way to, to create itself. So that stuff will happen. So let's talk about some examples of the Internet of Things and how they're being used today to, to make our lives better okay. or more data-filled, if you will. Got you. So smart cities. We know that uh, a lot of cities are looking at this because – you know, 30% of downtown traffic in any given city is people looking for parking spots. You told me that before. Right, yeah. right. Oh, so yeah. now smart parking sensors here over at um, uh, at the uh, at the airport, you know, they have those green lights and those red lights sure. that, yep. that show mm-hmm. spots. You can get access to that and find out where you're going to park in advance. You can have uh, smart cities uh, dole out water consumption and power in a way that makes sense for that city's capacity and to get the best rates for people. Uh, the aviation industry is using uh, sensors to save minute amounts of fuel by changing flight paths to avoid wind to set the speed perfectly so that it uses just the right amount of fuel. 1% savings in mm-hmm. fuel for an airline is billions of dollars per year. I mean, you think about that incremental improvement. It means a lot of money. Think about us here in Cleveland. We can use uh, sensors to monitor the level of pollution in Lake Erie. We can find out if somebody's dumped something in there right away because the sensors will alert us. Um, We are today tracking behaviors of migratory animals to understand climate change. And so you tag a sensor onto the wing of something or a leg, and you can find out what it's doing, where it's at, you know, what it's, you know, um, experiencing in terms of stress based on its you know, blood pressure, whatever we want to do. It's pretty amazing. <laughs> That's awesome. So it's a whole new market there. <laughs> it seems like it's almost endless to what uh, the IoT provides for us. The Internet of Things is going to continue to grow and go. Grow and go. And now we talk about having these sensors do the work of monitoring when we're not there. Two examples of that might be uh, you have an elderly person who wants to live independently. What if they fall or get hurt or they're not uh, moving, you know, for a while? Um, the sensors can alert um, yeah, 911. They can alert family members. We already have baby monitors that will detect whether a child has moved or not within you know any given amount of sleep, which is normal. We have um, uh, border security, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. We can't build this wall, you know. <laughs> th- I know oh, yes, we can. And we're making them some politicians. <laughs> yes, yes, will <laughs> promise some things. But maybe we set up uh, intrusion detection sensors all along that are deployed that. Just get thrown on the ground. Right? Sure, the, the wall may not have to, be, have to be made out of stone. You got it. It could be made of some uh, something. And then you get rapid response to that wall, right? So you know wherever it's needed. Pretty amazing stuff. Sports. Now, Mike, I think you'd want to talk about this for a whole show, but we know that data analytics in sports has taken an inflection point that's real significant in the past few years. I've right? seen Moneyball. Yep. Good movie. <laughs> Moneyball. Now. <laughs> These athletes are strapped with sensors and cameras to monitor everything from their heart rate to their breathing speed to their exhaustion level to the amount of pivots they make to the amount of the height that they dribble things. All of that data is coming in to be analyzed, and now we've got a real hyper-personal view of, of data and sports that we've never had before. As long as we don't lose the ability to go with our gut and that the data doesn't overwhelm us and that we can kind of go, you know what, I still like this kid or I still like this situation. I'm going to go with, with my gut. I'm sorry, did that offend you when I say you? We're not going to ignore the data, but we'll no. just go the other way. Okay. Well, there's three types of people in this world, Mike, <laughs> that when we deal with data. So there's the uh, visceral decision maker. That's mm-hmm. the gut person who says, I don't really care about the data. I've been doing this for 30 years. I'm pretty good at it. We're going to go here. And in fact, I'm the one taking the responsibility for it. Might be a general, military general. Who Could be a guy on Match.com. Yes. So <laughs> it could be that. <laughs> Uh, now I, I like forgot what I'm going to talk about. Oh, <laughs> the second type of data person is one who says, I only look at the data. I don't make any decisions unless the data supports it. Those right. guys have analysis paralysis because they need more and more data. That's probably the other extreme as well. Sure. Then there's that third person who says, look, I understand that data is a tool to give me insights and to give me some analytics, and I'm going to make that final decision, but it will be data-driven. I think that's the right balance. We're mm-hmm. always going to need to make decisions as humans. The algorithms will never fully catch up on a lot of things. Sure. But they can tell us, right? They can. It's like the horoscope when you read it. Stars can impel, but they can't compel or something like that. Uh, two put. minutes. So, uh, so a couple of other things that are happening in the space. IBM is investing $3 billion in a, a company that they're ramping up around this whole Internet of Things um, um, 
uh, evolution, right? Sure. And uh-huh. how they can support customers with it. Right. Companies are being formed around the Internet of Things. Here's some implications, Internet of Things. Here's some implications that we have. Data. This is so huge. There's so much data. There's terabytes and petabytes of data. And, mm-hmm. you know, we have to understand who gets it, how is it interpreted, and then what are their motivations for interpretation of that data. Data transparency is really, really important, and the integrity of that data is really important. We'll talk about some of that in a future show. Mm-hmm. But also, Mickey McManus, who wrote this book, Trillions, he says that we are in an era of unbounded, malignant complexity. There are so many things that can go wrong with all of these sensors connected. We really have to have policies and security in place. He told me a story. I was at a, a small um, forum that he, he mentioned. Do you know there's a virus that can be attached to a pacemaker? Did we talk about this? No, we did not. So if you have a pacemaker and you come within 100 feet of... Uh, your pacemaker can be attacked, so it'll deliver a lethal jolt of energy to your heart. Mm -hmm. If anybody comes within 100 feet of you that has a pacemaker, it will then infect that person and deliver a a jolt to kill them. That is how complicated and how dangerous this is. We know we can take over drones, make a squadron. 30 seconds. Now, instead of just being able to, you know, monitor or hack somebody's computer, I can make their sprinkler system go off. I can open their garage door. I can you know, ruin their home mm-hmm. if I hack into it. So we really need to be... Um, super secure. Super secure. So yeah. that ties into our story for next week, that we need to talk about cybersecurity and how that impacts us. So you can have a James Bond-type home, but it can turn into an absolute uh, uh, ca- catastrophe and disaster if the wrong things happen. So that's why you need the security, I'm assuming. Absolutely, and Sounds that's cool. a real fun field and really critical for the future of the I Internet think I'm going to go things. live in a cabin and in a cabin in the woods and not have the Internet of Things. I'm kidding you. Will it be a connected cabin? <laughs> <laughs> no, no. I, I think me and Alexa have a new relationship that's going to last for a while, so that was cool. I think she's going to serve you well. Thank Welcome. you. Thank you. Hey, well, listen, everybody. What a cool half hour. We've enjoyed our time with you. It goes so quickly here. Maybe we'll be expanding soon. What do you think, Sanjay? I think so. We're looking at moving our format to a, a one-hour show and, and featuring guest uh, guests and all of that fun stuff. So yeah, look forward be to it. a lot of fun. We're good. So thanks for joining us for this week's edition of Tech Talk 2020. We will be back next week. Again, if you have questions about the Internet of Things or Teslas or drones, you can definitely hit us up on our Facebook page, which is Tech Talk 2020, or tweet at us at Tech Talk 2020. All right. Well, listen, we appreciate your time. We appreciate you listening, and we look forward to having a good time and learning things next week, specifically on the subject of securities. Thanks, everyone. We'll talk to you next week. Thank you again for listening to Tech Talk 2020 here on Integrity Radio, WINT, and 1330 AM, WINTradio.com. See ya.